Do you know who Shawn Minder is? He is a man who went to jail because he was trying to save another person's life. Why did he go to jail for doing that? Let's look at why he went to jail. Shawn Binder was arrested and put in jail and was freed because they were saving somebody's lives. They were working as volunteers to rescue refugees and other people in emergency situation on the sea. One day, they were preparing to go out to rescue, and the police came to check our passport as usual. However, they started to check the packages, the clothes, and the electronic devices. The police were looking for advance for the suspicion of smuggling, money laundering, and more crimes because they were told that the volunteers were belong to criminal organization. They were arrested and put in jail. Also, Sean was facing 25 years of prison life because of nothing. But the suspicions of crime, he was released from prison by bail after 100 days. Now he is in Ireland and can't go back to Greece. He says that the scariest thing is not that he was put in jail. But this can be happen to anyone. Actually, it was government that criminalized people who was trying to refugees rather than doing more protect a refugees' right to find a safe place to live. The Greek government should drop the church against Shun and should make public statements acknowledging legitimacy of humanitarian action and action to defend refuge and migrant rights. Thank you for watching. their arrest then and, and what were you on the day they came to arrest you how did that happen yeah so it, it kind of took sarah mardini and i by surprise we were doing something called a, a spotting shift that happens at the southern shore at the last final tip where it's safe for a boat to arrive and between the hours of 12 a.m and 7 a.m we are there looking out and making sure that nothing is happening that is um, perhaps dangerous um and then at 3 a.m police officers came and they checked our passports this is fairly regular but then they also checked our jeep and they took us in for questioning. Two days later they released us pending further investigation. They had taken, confiscated our laptops, our mobile phones, they had searched through our bags of flour for drugs. They had found nothing. And then an article was written three days later or four days later saying something like a German spy has been apprehended at the border with a Syrian accomplice. Um, they were infiltrating the military camps. If it seems like they are, if it seems like a spy novel it's because it is like one and it was really polemic and written like that. Nothing for us changed. We continued working as usual because people were still arriving in danger. And then in August, we were arrested again and we were detained for three and a half months. And we're currently facing charges of uh, facil facilitation, smuggling, or essentially smuggling, being part of a criminal organization, money laundering, fraud, and even espionage or spying. And we face 25 years in prison because of it. And do you have any theory as to why they picked the two of you up and charged you with that? I mean, is this happening in the area? Did you see anything? So for me, what was so surprising is that we had been so cooperative with the authorities. But I think the point here and the really important thing is that there's nothing special about what we did. It wasn't criminal. It wasn't heroic. It was just providing the basic medical care to people. And when you step back, when I was in prison, I was researching my case, it turns out there's 158 individuals across the European Union who are being prosecuted. I got an email from a guy called Norbert Valley, he's a pastor in Switzerland. He has been prosecuted because he let asylum seekers sleep on his church pews during a storm. That at the moment, given the political and the legal context that we currently exist in and the securitized border that we have enforced, we are allowing the criminalization of humanitarian action on a chronic level. 
And, and give us an idea, Sean, of what you saw during your time in Greece working with sure. those migrants. What kind of people were arriving? You know, why they're trying to make these claims that suspicious people are among the groups there? Sure. I mean, smuggling is undoubtedly a part of this system. Unfortunately, it is a, it is a part of the securitization itself. When we lock our border down, there are, there are a number of facts here. It is illegal to be in Europe without the necessary documentation currently. We don't give out visas to people who are asylum seekers in third countries, but they have to be in the territory to be an asylum seeker, essentially, and we secure our border. So there's no legal way of making that journey. We are forcing people to undertake these smuggled and extremely dangerous journeys. And that is why civilian search and rescue is so fundamentally important. 18,900 people, roughly, according to the UNHCR, have drowned or assumed missing in the Mediterranean. It is the most dangerous ocean or the most dangerous sea in the world right now. And that is because of our policies. And we've seen boats that are designed for 15 people, packed with 86 people, many without life jackets, lots of children. And meanwhile, just finally, where do you go from here with your case? So right now it is a state of limbo. I, I'm, I'm very confident that we will not be found guilty. They say that we're spies because we used encrypted communication services. That's WhatsApp, right? These are, this is the kind of evidence being brought forward. But the point is not that we are going to be found guilty. It is enough for this to be a case that is extremely costly for us. It takes such a long time, and it has a chilling effect. On the shoreline, on the southern shore, where we were three or four civilian search and rescue organizations, there are now zero. And this comes in a time when, in percentage terms, it is more dangerous to make this journey. The sum, the sum total of the response and the view of humanitarian action as criminal is to cause more people to drown. Okay, That's Sean, what it's achieved. Well, Sean Binder, thanks so much for coming in and telling us your story, and I Thank hope you you'll much. stay in touch with us as it all unfurls. And out of prison. <laughs> Indeed.